commissioning being anticipated within this current quarter. Regarding the asset units, construction and equipment erection activities are at peak with most equipment deliveries completed. Other expansion projects such as MIBK, MIBC and hydrogenation amongst others are also taking shape and are on track to commissioning as per plan. The polycarbonate compounding project is steadily progressing as well. Customers have accepted and appreciated product quality as delivered by EPAC. The notable development, we signed a memorandum of understanding worth 9,000 crores on January 31st, 2024. This adds to the previous MOU worth 5,000 crores on May 23, 2023, aggregating to almost 14,000 crores. The project covered by this investment of about 9,000 crores will be completed by 2027. And the focus, sorry, the project uh, of all the investments that have been announced will be completed by 2027. The focus for this recent uh, announcement will be on manufacturing three new products polycarbonate resins, methyl uh, uh, MMA, polymethyl methacrylate PMMA resins and compounds, as well as aniline. Additionally, we have signed a term sheet with Petronet LNG, which is based in uh, The Hague, which de-risks our growth trajectory by ensuring critical raw material availability via pipeline. We are set to offtake 250 KTPA of propylene and 11 KTPA of hydrogen over a 15 year period from the initial delivery. This long term agreement provides Deepak with assured access to crude feedstock for production processes at a competitive cost. Further, considering the supply will be through pipeline, not only will it be safe and cost effective, but it will have nil environmental impact as compared to road and rail transport. In conclusion, our steadfast focus on enhancing operational excellence, optimizing assets, and solid project execution has allowed us to set new production benchmarks in several key intermediates. India's robust economic growth presents opportunities for the chemical industry at a global scale. And we are excited about not only our growth potential, but our op the opportunity for Deepak to be an anchor for tomorrow's India growth potential. Through strategic and substantial investments in new and brownfield projects, including those in the phenol acetone value chain, and aimed at upstream and downstream integration, our expanded capacities will enable us to serve not only the baseline growth as envisaged, but also a production migration from high cost re uh, regions. In fact, our long term plan envisages creating one of the most integrated chemical and petrochemical complexes globally, which is sure to unlock new frontiers for Deepak and India's burgeoning chemical industry. We believe our ability to capitalize on these opportunities, ensuring growth value maximization and serving the nation sustainably will benefit all stakeholders. I would now like to hand the call over to Mr. Sanjay Upadhyay, who will address this forum and take you through the financial performance and key updates during the period. Thank you, Malik, and good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us on this call today. I'll walk you through the highlights for the financial results for the quarter and nine months ended uh, December 31, 2023. Deepak Nitro has demonstrated stable and resilient performance this quarter in the face of challenging market conditions prevailing in the global chemical industry during the third quarter, in fact, throughout the year. We have been consistently communicating about the increased level of volatility in the industry, warranting faster response times and sharper strategic initiatives to capture key parts of the value chain. We have demonstrated this during the quarter as the company successfully expanded its market share in all businesses and boosted its revenue across various business sectors. By maintaining consistent and reliable supplies, Deepak Nitro has upheld its long standing 
relationship with the customer resulting in increased volumes across key product categories and balance mix of domestic and export sales consequently the company's operations have remained highly efficient in capital, uh, capital utilization reflected in an enhanced return on capital employed of 36% in q3 fy24 continuing its streak of robust performance over the past 12 quarters Now coming to the financial performance in Q3 FY24, on a consolidated basis, revenue came in at 2,000 crores as compared to 1,795 crores in Q3 FY24. On a quarter-over-quarter basis, EBITDA came in at 318 crores from 319 crores, almost flat in Q2. EBITDA margin was stable at 15 percent despite pressures of higher raw material costs and other utilities. Tax to the 202 crores from 205 crores in Q2. Profitability aligned with the operational performance of the company, which was impacted due to lower realization and higher pricing of the raw material. In the ensuing quarter, the circumstances is anticipated to improve. In nine months, FI24 on a consumer basis, revenue was lower by 7 percent to 5,613 crores, as compared to 6,046 crores nine months 2023. Everything stood at 879 crores in nine months FY24 compared to 976 crores in nine months FY23. Margins were stable at 15 percent in FY24. Net came at 557 crores as against 618 crores. On the operating front, our domestic business revenue stood at 1572 crores and uh, and 4474 crores in Q3 and nine months respectively. Export revenues are 451 crores in Q3 and 1,134 in nine months. On a consolidated basis, the domestic to export mix to the 28 to 22 percent. Now moving to the segmental customer performance in the advanced intermediate segment, revenues are flat at 635 crores in Q3 FY24 versus 684 crores in Q3 FY24. While EBITDA stood at only 23 crores in the quarter under review. In nine months, FY24, unit revenue came in at 2,084 crores, and EBITDA came in at 390 crores, translating into a margin of 19 percent despite the current environmental challenges circumstances. Heat of nitrate has also adjusted product pricing to offset the rising input costs, resulting in maintaining margin performance compared to the previous period, signaling a proactive approach to amid market challenges. Deepak Samuel's delivered an encouraging performance that only grew by 20% to 1,355 crores in Q3 as by 24 versus 1,124 crores in Q2. While EBITDA stood at 201 crores, and EBITDA margin came in at 15% in the quarter. In the nine months, revenue did grew by 6% to 3,558 crores, and EBITDA came in at 497 crores, translating into a margin of 14%. Last year, on balance sheet side, the company's financial position is significantly enhanced, and the company continues to maintain a zero debt position with a net worth of 4,543 crores on a consolidated basis and 2,839 crores on a standalone, thereby strengthening its balance sheet for the future expansions. Additional DNL has additionally DNL has made a community investment of 656 crores in Deepak Campaign Limited, its only own subsidiary, with 56 crores invested in Q3 FY24. DPN prepared its remaining balance uh, account loan during Q3 to become debt free following the success of DNL which has been debt free for several quarters now the group as a whole enjoys liquid uh, investments of 386 crores in the quarter DNL has invested 17 crores in Deepak Oman Investments to acquire 32% stake the treasury gains for the quarter stands at 5.7 crores in Q3 FY24 and 22 crores in first nine months of FY24 The group has undertaken many digitalization initiatives. One of the key initiatives successfully implemented is SAP, along with customer relationship management, Ariba, and logistics tools from November 23. DPA has installed complete suite and digital and DML R set to follow sequentially. Furthermore, the company has implemented measures to enhance operational efficiency through process optimization, yield improvements, and cost reduction through power and water consumption. Our project pipeline remains robust, and investment of around 2,000 crores are expected to be commissioned between January to December 24, and this will steadily add to the capacity 
uh, you have to backward integration to what is impetus to the growth. With that, I would now request the moderator to open the forum for question and session. Thank you. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask question may press star and one on their touch tone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handset while asking. There are more than 20 parties in the conference. We will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. Ladies and gentlemen, you may press star and one to ask questions. We have our first question from the line of Nero Zimodia from Anvil. Please go ahead. Yeah, good afternoon, team. Uh, so I have two questions. So one on the standard on and then on the phenolics. Uh, sir, if you can share like uh, for Q3 and for uh, nine months of FY24, uh, what sort of volume growth we have witnessed in the standalone business and along with if you can just share your thoughts on uh, how much of our current capacity like including those D bottleneck uh, is currently utilized and has a scope for further utilization. Uh, you know, nine months, uh, I think our volume growth is in the range of say, 17 to 20 percent in nine months. Okay. And uh, as regards capacity, the capacity, uh, I mean, we are using around 80 to 85 percent capacity. Some plants are having uh, surplus capacity, but then it's not very difficult for us to debottle like and go ahead. In case so, capacity is just a word. I mean, you must not get bogged down by the sigma capacity. Sali hai kya hai? We can always. In fact, last was, this year we have demonstrated that one of the plants we have spent little amount and then. So this additional product which was never there in our budget or never in our uh, uh, this pipeline. The sudden demand came and we could produce that. So that way our plants are legible, uh, multi-product plants and team is capable of delivery. So, uh, but uh, you can take around 80 to 85 percent capacity reduction for the for so nine months. I'll just add one thing that uh, our bottleneck exercises have been a mix of hardware as well as software. Not only in uh, phenolics, which we have also mentioned, also in uh, uh, advanced intermediate. This is also coming on the back of a lesson that we learned about two years ago when we realized that we were unable to grow our wallet share because in many places our capacity had peaked. So with a judicious mix of OPEX as well as uh, increased assets, we have ensured that our capacity is more than the current increased volume that we are pushing out into the market. So wherever possible, we have created headroom, as I mentioned in my initial uh, remarks. And where we feel like it, by and large, we will not be able to go much further here, we have also initiated uh, plans for large-scale uh, capital, which would be green trees. For example, the Oman uh, plant. Got it. Uh, sir, uh, let's say if we consider the backward integration project, what you mentioned, the nitric acid part, uh, and uh, coupled with the headroom of the capacities available with us uh, in terms of the deep bottleneck and uh, some pockets where it is currently underutilized, uh, what's the f fair assessment in terms of our uh, quarterly bid again moving to those ranges of 150 crores, which we used to do in on a quarterly basis in FY23, because this quarter, if we see, we were at 112 crores. So if you can just help us, like, what would be the combination of volume growth as well as the benefits of backward integration facilities uh, can help us to uh, take that level of run rate in which of the quarters of FY25? So rather than getting into uh, quarter number and pegging ourselves to that, yeah. What I can share is that both of these will have their own compounding value that they can give. And all of this depends significantly in terms of the improvement in the offtake for the products that we make. Over this period of time, we have, in that sense, you know, gone through the baptizing of fire and by increasing our wallet share at the expense of competition 
who when they, their wallet share reduces their operating costs also increases as our debauchery making as well as backward integration commission it will allow us to maximize on this position that we have was the agency to take i won't give you an answer with a quarter but i can tell you that one way or another uh, this is the direction that it will trend in whatever numbers you are giving yeah one you know either add a quarter or subtract a quarter but when these plants come online this is the cumulative benefit sir any expected timelines which you can share when the nitric acid plant would be commissioned uh, i can just share that we have already announced by and large every quarter there will be some plant or another being commissioned some is upstream some is downstream some is in ai some is in you know like so uh, rest assured we will you know, see good value over a period of time being increased to the top line and the bottom line. got it sir malik bhai just one uh, uh, one question to what you mentioned like uh, agrochemicals textiles dyes and pigments have been showing a subdued growth so if you can just help us know uh, how much of our uh, standalone business would be uh, or standalone revenue would be coming from these four broad segments currently uh, it would be a considerable amount but what i was sharing was largely Uh, situation that was at play in Q3, agrochemicals, especially the products that we give to multinationals. Yeah, they uh, in some cases uh, they have had a difficult year in 2023 CY, and as they close their book, they would also want to move forward with the minimum overhang in terms of inventory and uh, uh, you know, working capital. So Q4. is going to be incrementally better than q3 in terms of volume okay now in some products you know some products there is continuing to be a softness in terms of demand in some places that is largely because of the specific customers where their balance sheets also may be stretched in other places we are finding that there is a, you know, a fragile improvement <laughs> now for products where deepak is into the uh, dyes the textile uh, intermediate there also we have seen certainly that there is an improvement in demand if i compare q4 and q3 but all of these things at the end of the day are sequential in nature so i'm comparing not to the last year but to the previous quarter got it uh so second question is on the phenol business like based on the reported volumes what we have uh, shown in the presentation i think our co- our opex comes to closer to 185 190 dollars if we do some rough math so does it include the benefit of that 29 megawatt captive power plant which i have set up and uh if yes going forward is there any further scope of re- reduction in our operating cost along with it if you can just share some list of initiatives which have taken in the phenolics business over last one or two years to bring down our operating cost and improve the efficiency levels we know uh, several measures are taken if this performance will not come if you are just relying on the market volatility right absolutely i mean uh, you must appreciate that by increasing the capacity itself the overhead cost per ton goes down significantly that is a major major advantage which people are missing and it improves the efficiency of the plant on top of it there are logistical improvements what we have done increasing the size of uh, containers which will reduce the which will uh, of course reduce the uh, cost as well as we will be able to benefit uh, we have taken care every advanced process uh, control management system which is also controlling my our processes and then improving the yield and production and thereby yield so and then valorization of product that is also helping us in a big way you know so several and these efforts are on this doesn't stop at this it continues so various ways and uh, we have a very very capable team of people handling this so i don't worry on this i think this the these people efficiency and uh, 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 the production of the phenol is absolutely uh, i would say controlled well by the team and all improvements whatever possible people are doing there on all the fronts 
including sustainability. So we are continuing to reduce our carbon footprint on a uh, per kg of production basis. And keep in mind that we also in many cases have to take up the also logistics of getting the raw material as well as in some cases giving the, uh, the final product. So when we look at improvement, we look at uh, net of gains. Uh, so just a small clarification here. So there's a benefit of the 29 megawatt fully captured this quarter or some benefit is yet to be yielded here? No, power plant benefit is fully captured. Fully captured here, no? Yes. Okay. Thank you so much, sir, and wishing you all the best. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. We have our next question from the line of Gagandi from Invest Analytics Advisors. Please go ahead. Hello. Yes, Mr. Gurundi, please. An order? Yes. Yes. Uh, good afternoon, sir. Congrats for a resilient performance despite the global headwinds. So, uh, as you know, there has been a demand slowdown at global level, uh, despite that you people have sustained the performance in the terms of top line and the bottom line. So, uh, two parts of question on this. Uh, whether the inventory restocking by the Chinese players is over and can we expect the things getting normalized in FY25? And secondly, uh, how do you see the chemical prices, uh, specifically the phenols and the acetone shaping up uh, in the near term followed by uh, in Agra 25? Sir? Okay, see, first of all, uh, this concept about deep stocking, I emphasized it last time, I'll just re emphasize it again. Deep stocking essentially means uh, that for whatever reason, a manufacturer believes that his cost of manufacturing tomorrow, for whatever reason, may be. Uh, you know, a little bit either the same or more, and hence is choosing to manufacture today, but is then trying to push it out so that he can manufacture, sorry, less, uh, so he can manufacture tomorrow. Now, at the same time, the headwind is the customer's ability to take, and the customer's ability to take is linked to his ability to sell. So, these talking is not a situation which is. Uh, uh, something that happens in a transient manner. It is the rate of destocking which is the question. And the rate of destocking obviously has to slow down because the inventory level themselves get depleted as destocking is accelerated right now. So over a period of time, you will see a slowdown in the destocking where the demand and the supply by and large start to come to a parity. Now generally, this will happen over the next quarter, couple of quarters, depending on the end set. And in places where there may be geopolitical uncertainties or economic uncertainties, interest rate uncertainties, those will all play some role or another in either convincing a customer to choose to buy more regardless of whether they need it or not, or buy less in order to maintain a low balance sheet over time. Now, when it comes to products like phenol and acetone, these are con manufactured as well as consumed in large volume. And they are made by players all over the world, and there's a significant part of it which is also the freight component, a significant part of it which is also the ability to hold inventory. So moving forward, it's not going to be about whether phenol price and acetone prices go up or down. It's going to be about how they move in relation to their upstream and downstream price. So when we look at our uh, performance, it is about whether we are able to manage the product pricing to continue to give a sustainable margin over material. I don't care if benzene prices go up and propylene prices go up, as long as I'm able to pass it on. What I care about is that I'm focused on volume improvement, quality improvement, and my domestic uh, consumption base is continuing to show robust growth in demand. And I am there cost competitively manufacturing and supplying them the quality they need. So I am reasonably satisfied as long as my plant is always able to ensure whatever is being uh, required is being manufactured. Thank you, sir. We will move ahead to next question. We have a next question from the line of Abhijit Akela from Kotak Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, good afternoon and thanks for taking my questions. Uh, first, just on the uh, 9,000 crore MOU signed with the Gujarat government, 
there are two uh, you know sets of new products mentioned within that uh, which is the MMA and PMMA and Anilee uh, so is it possible to share some further color around uh, you know the breakdown of capex between these uh the capacity that we plan to set up and your you know revenue and margin expectation for the that would be really helpful thank you so uh abhiji i think uh, i don't think we need to go into a break up of the capex because there will be lots of scope for optimization in this in terms of one you know, whether it is uh, with regard to land or uh, uh utilizing certain assets as allocations and things like that like boilers and things like this now the reason that uh, i feel confident and by the way these are not just two products uh mma and pmma are made using feed stocks which we are already very comfortable using you know, uh feed stocks such as acetone ammonia etc and what is critical here to keep in mind abhijit is that it will also involve a signation block of significant capacity now this will be at a world scale as usual when it comes to deeper and this will be a significant uh, fundamental you know asset which will then be available to the indian ecosystem obviously for deeper specialty chemical needs and all that moving forward so signation today generally is not uh performed in india maybe with some small capacity here or there similarly when you're looking at polycarbonate you're looking at for uh, you know particular process competency which will then be put here at a you know at a world scale and it will allow those processes whether it is like oxygenation or melt to be used for various different uh, specialty chemical applications so today if i was to hypothetically say that i will have uh, 100 uh, ton requirement for uh, signation i will invest in 110 ton capacity 120 ton capacity this will allow me to get into niche specialty molecules uh, as well as a large commodity play and most of these including the ones that we have announced like polycarbonate this is a resin which will then go downstream into the compounding so the margins of all of these will be uh, either equal to or in an accretive manner uh, better than what you are currently seeing in deeper phenolics so on a net basis or consolidated basis you will see a blended ebida which sits uh, comfortably between deeper nitrite uh, normalized situation where it has upstream and downstream integration as well as deeper phenolics uh, ebida this one Uh, understand thank you uh, and uh, with regard to the financing of these projects uh, uh, will it primarily be debt financed uh, and if so is there a sort of peak debt to uh, ebitda number that you have in mind you know uh, going forward uh, vijit uh, will come back to you i on this when we crystallize our plan and so it's too premature to tell you today how it's going to Only thing is one must know that we are having a strong value zero debt company and 5,000 crore net worth rise. So there is enough room for debt also, and enough room for equity also. There is no issue as such on financing because it, the financing also depends on the requirement uh, how it comes. You know the cash flow year one, year two, year three. So we have time you know to plan our things in a most. Uh, beneficial way to all sure sure thank you and uh, one last thing is just on the 2000 crores of new investments that are being commissioned uh, during cy24 so this would include the uh, all the projects listed on slide number 10 so polymer polycarbonate compounding uh, you know uh, fluorination acid mibk uh, all of these basically getting commissioned during cy24 Uh, yes, yes. By December 2024, uh, we are expecting. Uh, so there will be one specialty chemical which will reach that a little bit by you know, month or two months. Now, of course, we are still trying to see how we can optimize that. So by and large, December. Yeah. So, yeah. Right, and if uh, by 26, we would expect uh, all of these projects to pay off uh, optimally, or you know, it would be a maybe slightly graded kind of ramp up for some of these. 
So they will all go into uh, you know, production ramp up as we have normally our plan for production ramp up, which includes safe, but it also includes optimizing as quickly as possible. Now, asking me, asking us whether you know we will have a payback by 2020, is that what you are asking us? Uh, just sort of asking about the optimal utilization. Can we sort of expect most of these will be at optimal levels by yes, fiscal 26 yes, itself? Yeah, or? No doubt on that. Yeah, we have accelerated ramp up plan. I mean, safety is the primary focus. So as long as safety is kept in place, the ramp up plan uh, in terms of customer requirement, they are staying faster better. Yeah, yeah, it will be optimal. Okay. There's no issues on that. Okay, understood. Uh, thank you so much and uh, wish you all the best. Thank, thank you very much. much. Thank you. We have our next question from the line of Vivek Rajamani from Morgan Stanley. Please go ahead. Mr. Vivek. Um, hi, sir. Yeah. Uh, I'm audible? Yes. Yeah. Hi. Hi, sir. Uh, thank you so much for the presentation. Uh, two questions from me. Uh, firstly, sir, on the advanced intermediates side, uh, I think you mentioned uh, in the earlier uh, participants that, you know, Q4, you think it's going to be better from volume perspective from Q3. Uh, my question was, looking at the recovery from an FI25 standpoint, uh, do you think it's going to be more of the case of, you know, us seeing sequential recovery every quarter going into the next year? Or do you still think, given you know what you're seeing in the industry, it's still a situation where you know you see a recovery one quarter and then maybe a step back? I uh, just wanted to get your thoughts more in terms of the pace and trajectory of recovery going into F25. Uh, that was the first question. And the second one was on phenolics. Uh, you know, just given the uh, the de bottlenecking and all the initiatives that you've done and the industry spreads, uh, I would have thought that the sequential improvement would have been much higher on the phenolic side. Uh, just wanted to clarify if there was something different uh, that was happening in this quarter. Thank you so much. Thanks, Vivek. Uh, I'll just answer your second question first. I would be interested in seeing the data that gave you an indication that the improvement should be significantly better. Because, uh, you know, from every data point that we see, I think that uh, Q3 has been a strong performance for Phenolics, given the current macroeconomic climb, given the fact that there is not a single plant in uh, pretty much in most of the world which is into merchant sales of Phenol which is operating at anywhere close to 140, 150% like Deepak is, I would be curious to understand uh, the data. And it would help me also make better estimations in the future. Nonetheless, uh, what we can share is that the team, the uh, team on the ground and the technical team continues to find further headroom for improvement, whether it is on capacity or on efficiency that continues and we encourage the team to yeah, be creative in looking for opportunity for improvement. Now, with regard to the first question, uh, whether the recovery will be consistent and secular in nature, this is difficult to say from where we are looking right now. It does seem like it, but it is a fragile recovery. Geopolitical, uh, you know, economic shock, seem to have become a norm over the last few years. And there is already a lot of stuff which is priced in, but escalation in any of these things remains to be seen as uh, possible uh, you know, uh, black swans. We believe that more than anything else, India will continue to be a remarkably bright arc in the middle of all of this uncertainty. And hence, Indian consumers and Indian customers will be the most benefited by having domestic suppliers of key raw materials, such as Deepak. So we see how the improvement on a global scale pans out. But rest assured that India will always be a couple of uh, hundred bits ahead of the rest of the world in terms of rate of recovery.
Sure, sir. Uh, very clear. Thank you so much for the answers. Uh, just one bookkeeping question from my side. Uh, what would be the current uh, phenol nameplate capacity after all your uh, deportal nickings that you've done so far? No, we've forgotten that. It used to be uh, 200,000 tons when we commissioned it in 2018. I don't think anyone has asked the feed this again. No worries. Thank you so much, sir, and all the very best. Thank you, very much. Thank you, sir. We have our next question from the line of Rohit Nagaraj from Centrum Booking. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, so my first question is uh, on the uh, phenol front. So um, have we seen any new capacities coming in uh, China uh, and uh, maybe Korea or other parts of the world? And how do we see the spread going ahead? Will they... Uh, continue to improve and stabilize here, or probably FI 25 will start uh, whether they will be able to go up. Thank you. you know, there is there's lots of capacity that has been commissioned over the last year, especially in China and the Far East. And uh, that was expected in any case. Now, with regards to spread, again, difficult question to answer in the current. Uh, Situation. You see, what has happened is that the Red Sea, as well as what is happening currently with regards to the Panama Canal, has almost split the world into two. So, freight rates and uh, extended cash conversion cycles are forcing customers to make very different kinds of buying decisions compared to what they would make if it was only linked to demand consumption. Now, keeping this in mind, keeping also in mind that Asia is the world's largest manufacturer of petrochemicals. Spread is a very difficult uh, point to put in place because it is not just about the spread between phenol and benzene or propylene, but it is also about whether the product is in what is called contango or backwardation. So we buy our benzene in a manner which is an N minus one and we sell our phenol at current market rates. This gives us this delta of about a month, month and a half, where we have that breathing room and it gives us the opportunity to optimize our pricing policies with regards to the feedstock availability. Now this visibility is key for us to make the right decision when it comes to margin over material. Moving forward, the spread may increase or decrease based on whether it becomes easier to move material around the world like it was a year ago or a couple of years ago. If there continue to remain such obstacles like what is happening right now around the Suez Canal or around the Panama Canal, then that will change both seller and buyer behavior. Right now with the current uh, uh, situation with crude prices as well as the geopolitical uh, premium, there's a lot of refineries which have gone into voluntary uh, lower run rate or voluntary shutdown. But these will all come back in and that will allow a significant improvement in the flow of feedstock such as benzene. Now how this translates into phenol is also a matter of how it is consumed and how customers stop it. We will see not uh, you know, it's not a good time to crystal ball gaze and give you a perspective of the next few quarters. But what we are ensuring we are doing is maintaining a broad uh, you know, purchasing scope. So we don't depend on one or two suppliers only. We buy from as many suppliers as possible. We tighten our uh, you know, purchasing rates because we are very large consumers. And we are also exactly where we need to be in terms of supplying to our customers who don't want to be depending on a very long credit cycle in order to get their phenol, acetone, or IPA. And moving forward over the next six, eight months, we will also become significant consumers of our own products. So we have to ensure that our debottleneck capacity is allowing us to maintain our wallet share despite an internal consumption story also. Sure, sir. Uh, got that, sir. Uh, so second question in terms of the total 14,000 uh, crores of investment uh, in Gujarat. Uh, just to get a perspective in terms of uh, whether the projects will come all together or maybe some projects will come in 26 and uh, the rest of them will come in 27. 
So we've clarified that about 2,000 out of that is in advanced process, uh, you know, advanced uh, phases of execution and will be commissioned over a period of time over the next few quarters. The remainder of that, you know, it, we're working along with uh, technology providers in order to optimize which comes first, which comes second, but it's clear what needs to happen by the end of 2027. Right. So look at it from the perspective of ensure, you know, knowing that for a company like Deepak, 2027 end is a very clear perspective. We have to make sure that we get our things right for which we have a good internal strength, financial strength as well as technical strength. So if you look backwards from 2027, you will see a very clear picture emerge. Well, it almost becomes irrelevant whether things are clumped together, bundled together or not. What will also add a fillip to this is that once these capacities, as we mentioned earlier, of you know, in all two of signation of uh, uh, you know various processes for making the polycarbonates and the compounding come into play, it gives us a wide constellation of applications for uh, the spec chem industry, for which we are also keeping some amount of uh, dry gunpowder on the side in terms of investment availability. So 2027 will see a marked uh, you know, base increase for Deepak, both in the quote-unquote commodity chemicals which will be downstream with the current play, as well as what one would qualify as specialty chemicals, which will be multi-step uh, including uh, in these processes which are all not exactly but almost uh, you know for the first time in India. Uh, got that sir. Just one last clarification. Uh, given that we have operated the phenol plant at close to about 88,000 tons of capacity during this quarter, uh, if I just uh, calculate on an annual basis for four quarters, uh, the capacity comes to about 350,000. Uh, would that calculation be right? Sir? Thank you. Yeah, that calculation is right, but you can't multiply because each quarter we have its own uh, some uh, changes in quarter. But I mean, uh, what you are saying is right. It is around that only. Sure, uh, that's helpful, sir. Thanks a lot, and all the best. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. We have a next question from the line of Pavnish Kumar from Ashwini Kas. Please go ahead. Yes, good afternoon everyone. Am I audible? Yes, yes, yes. good afternoon. Yes, uh, so first question is that uh, with the kind of projects that we have planned in upcoming 2-3 years, what kind of operating margins are we looking at? Like in last quarter we did around 15-15.5% operating margins. So what kind of operating margins are we looking at with all the capacities uh, up and running? See, this, uh, uh, let's uh, understand one thing, whatever we are announcements we have made, now, as mentioned by our uh, chairman, Deepak will be the most integrated petrochemical plant, maybe perhaps in the world only. You know, this will be, this is, we will add certainly to the whatever current margins we are seeing, because ultimately we are going downstream in the product, we have gone upstream also in the product, so combination of all these things. I mean, it puts people on a different uh, uh, horizon altogether, you know. I mean, so when we talk of this uh, 9,000 announcement, and I would, I mean, to answer you in financial numbers, the payback should be, or would be in the range of, say, five years. I, uh, but then we depend from various uncertainties in the market, but this is the calculation. And uh, roughly one should expect 2-3% uh, higher than what normal final margin is, you know, in all these projects. So you can calculate accordingly. Okay. Uh, secondly, I wanted to know, sir, like in the last annual report, there was a mention of a QIP that was planned for Deepak Nitrate. So we'll come back to you on all these things. See, we will have to finance 14,000 crores project out of the 2,000 is already done, but say 10,000 crores uh, capacity. So we will get back. We have to sit and work it out because we are having enough rooms of date. We have enough cash available. 
we are generating this is what we are talking about 2027 and so depending on the cash flow requirement every year i mean as i mentioned in my earlier remark also this is too early to answer your question how are we going to whether pib hoga ye hoga will certainly come back to you once we finalize our core process so i don't want to jump unless i am saying something it's very easy to say or for me to say date and pib hoga ya inter retro hoga but let let work it out and then come back to you rather than just giving a lot of numbers of students fair enough sir fair enough just uh, uh, just want to take last... this opportunity to answer your earlier question here yes sir you need to think about i would like you at least to think about deepak as a balanced portfolio of equities and bonds you like individual businesses that are counter cyclical by their nature so the most significant question that you should be asking is whether you believe in the fundamentals of the company agreed sir agreed hello yeah 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 uh, thank you for the for the answer monik bhai and uh, shasha जस्ट लास्ट क्वेश्चन सर लाइक अभी इसमें बहुत सारे अपने अनाउंसमेंट्स हमने किए हैं रिसेंटली लाइक नाइन थाउजेंड करोड वी हैव प्रॉमिस इन गुजरात देन फाइव थाउजेंड करोड वी आल्सो हैव प्रॉमिस इन गुजरात देन वी हैव सम प्रोजेक्ट्स कमिंग अप इन ओमान आल्सो जस्ट फॉर द बेनिफिट ऑफ ऑल द ऑडियंसेस कैन यू प्लीज समराइज ऑल द प्रोजेक्ट्स दैट वी आर प्लानिंग इन नेक्स्ट फोर फाइव इयर्स समराइज यू वांट टू मेक यू नेम द प्रोडक्ट्स the capex that we are doing in uh, next 4 5 years so can you please summarize all of them we we uh, we've announced that we're getting into specialty chemicals upstream integration including hydrogenation we are getting into an expansion a greenfield expansion of phenol acetone there will be this phenol a which will be as a downstream of phenol and acetone as well as an upstream of uh, polycarbonate resin we will also be making mma which as you know was uh, was a concept for me when i was discussing that will then also go into making of uh, poly mma you will also be manufacturing aniline uh, which by the way will be uh, what one would call a special uh, high grade aniline okay so just to be clear it is not the average uh, you know pu grade aniline but it is what you call uh, Uh, you know, an aromatic grade aniline you also uh, will be looking at an investment in oman which we have announced and we're calling it a phase 1 announcement because this will be for sodium nitrite and sodium nitrate uh, we will also be putting up an investment for a uh, world class research and development center which is also by the way uh, progressing well and should see the light of day maybe by about 12 months from now uh and over and about this you have the infrastructure development which will house all of these projects because they will need uh, the utilities and other assets online as well the reason that uh, you know we put up a separate uh, project management company is to ensure a high degree of governance because we will be doing multiple projects at the same time in multiple geographies and for what it's worth we do not make announcements about uh you know capex is incurred for deep bottle making downfill expansion and we also do not announce capex is if they are involved in specialty chemical uh, product which will be delivered in uh, deepak basket as an additional to what we are currently doing so those are not mentioned not included and not discussed these large scale projects which we have announced by and large these are all happening semi concurrently and by 